Night. The Welsh fly half me to spring from choking, so aggression's my humble bit. Hey ho, Consul's work's never done. Never well done, certainly. to begrudge anyone on the last for us, Steve, but the official car's pushing it a bit, don't you think? I'm still the chargé d'affaires. Always the bridesmaid. Time down here. And your son will be waiting for you, won't he? <laughs> Great. And here's a chair for you. Don't forget. 
get your duty. Bye, Maureen. Take good care of yourself. Ambassador, Stephen Tyler, your deputy. Welcome to Dublin. Thank you. Informal drinks at the Chancery at 5.30, heads of department only for now. Tomorrow, you've a 10 o'clock with Kevin Flaherty, Minister for External Affairs. He'll brief you on protocol for presenting your credentials to the President. Then, lunch with the tea shop. Nothing pressing, then. We have experienced some difficulty in convincing your son of the necessity for protection. Well, as you know, Trinity College Yes, yeah, well, I I'll deal with that. Now, London mentioned uh, a microchip corporation. The Sakai Corporation. Japanese. In town, scouting for a European base. The Irish have been courting them the best part of a year. We'd prefer them to site UK. So much for our new relationship with our host. Well, the river dance is one thing. The commercial attaché and myself are meeting Mr Sakai and his delegation tomorrow to discuss the incentive package. Good. I'd like to sit in on that. If you don't mind. Of course. Tyler. Yes. Yes, she is. Kevin Flaherty, Minister for External Affairs. Minister? How? Yes. Right. He wants us to go to Casey Barracks. Immediately. Minister, Her Excellency the British Ambassador, Mrs. Harriet Smith. Minister. And Stephen Tyler, you already know. My apologies for calling you in at such short notice, Ambassador. But I am anxious to learn what Britain's intentions are regarding the Cora. As you know, Minister, Her Excellency arrived only this morning. The Minister is, of course, referring to the Kilbriggan trawler which went down. That's correct, Ambassador. She went down some ten miles off the coast, in fact, in Irish waters. I was very sorry to hear about it. Are these men some of her crew? Recovered this morning. The skipper and his nephew are still missing. It's a tragedy. I'm not quite clear, however, what you mean by Britain's intentions. Well, despite Mr. Tyler's initial statement to the contrary, it remains our firm belief that the Cora was sunk by a British submarine. You've recovered the wreck? Not yet, no. Then your assertion that a submarine was involved is based on what, exactly? The sea was calm. The mayday she put out spoke of her being towed astern. There's no adequate explanation for her loss other than a submarine fouled her nets and dragged her down. No, we sympathise wholeheartedly with your loss, Minister. There's nothing in what you've said to support an allegation of British involvement. I'm told the proper name for this piece of hardware is an indicator boy used for satellite communications. Standard issue on Her Majesty's submarine fleet. Obviously, it would be inappropriate to comment. No, what would be inappropriate, Mr. Tyler, is for you to offer the standard line of never apologize, never explain. You'll forgive my blunt speaking, but these men were from my own constituency. I have to face their wives, their mothers, their children, not you. Minister. Until I just heard this from you, I was completely unaware of these allegations. Now, it may take some time, but I will, of course, look into the matter and provide you with an answer as soon as possible. Providing it doesn't conflict with British interests. It's a phrase I'm familiar with from your predecessor. Yes, it's true. My remit here is to protect Britain's interests. But that includes protecting her reputation as a just and honourable nation. Now, if one of our vessels is found culpable, we will, of course, admit responsibility. Minister, you have my word. In deference to your recent arrival, I'm prepared to delay any official announcement for 48 hours in order that you might take instruction and 
make the appropriate response. Thank you. However, if we've still not received an admission of responsibility and an unreserved apology from Britain within that period, I'm afraid I have no option but to make our own findings public. Part of his constituency. I rather think that's something I might have been told, don't you? Well, we knew the trawler had been lost, obviously. Not the first, and I doubt she'll be the last. So you issued a denial? I took the appropriate action given the information available at the time. MOD were and remain unable to confirm British presence in the area. Unable or unwilling? There are over 400 submarines currently deployed in the European area, Ambassador. French, American, Russian. Using indicator boys marked property of HMG? Ambassador. It's Jennifer, isn't it? Yes. Jennifer, could you ask the commercial and naval attaches to come in and we'd like coffee for four? Are you sure giving her the 48 hours was the right choice, Minister? What I'm giving her, Liam, is the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, the tech heads tell me it'll be the best part of two days before they can decrypt whatever's inside that indicator, boy. Each body that's found increases the demand for answers, Minister. The press office are pushing for a statement. And they'll have one. You see, the best part about having the whip hand lame is knowing when to use it. So, Commander, was it one of ours? In a trawler's submarine collision, the commander of the submerged vessel is obliged to surface, render aid, and report the incident. Naval policy on the matter is clear. Sadly, Commander, it's my experience that all too often practice follows policy only in the dictionary. With respect, my service is not in the habit of going around sinking innocent civilian craft. There is the presence of the indicator boy. Which could have been lost at any time. Inside Irish waters? John Stone, Ambassador. Ambassador. Under international law, submarines do have the right of innocent passage when travelling through territorial waters. Provided they remain on the surface and show identification. The International Maritime Organisation is quite clear on that. Your Excellency is remarkably well informed. Your Excellency was married to a keen yachtsman and... In traditional fishing grounds, the use of active sonar and radar is also advised. The use of active sonar would advertise the submarine's position. Are you telling me it's not used? Given that submarine warfare is essentially a game of hide and seek, it is inadvisable strategy when being sought to go around shrieking, Hello, I'm over here. Look, Commander. I'm not about to compromise national security, but I'd be extremely grateful if you would ascertain whether we did or whether we did not have a vessel in the area. And failing that, which of our submarines, if any, are short of an indicator boy? Of course. Stephen, I'd like you to draft a note to the Irish desk. Let them know the situation and request instruction. Ambassador. I'd like to see it before it goes. As you wish. Well. Hello, H. Hello, Spook. <laughs> so it's John now, is it? Where's the cloak? I thought that was standard issue. At home with the dagger. I'm the commercial attaché, so to speak. I see. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear about David, Harriet. Yes. Um... I, d I don't think we're going to get a straight answer from defence on the trawler, so we're, we're going to have to provide one of our own. What do you want me to do? See what you can find out. And if I come across conclusive proof that we did sink it? Shame the devil. People died. We owe their families the truth. What's this? They found a wreck or what? Jeez, Mary and Joseph, Jack, you're taking your life in your hands coming down here, aren't you? Jerry's fine, Sean. They are buffet the grace of God, huh? How's that then? How's that then? I tell you, how's that then? That should have been your lazy ass on the car and not Sean Delaney's. It's a terrible thing. Yeah, it's a terrible thing, all right, isn't it? Jeez, I'd love to get my hands on the bastard to drag them on. Ah, oh, come on, fellas. You can't say for sure it was a submarine now, can you? Of course it was a submarine. It's one of the Brits. Aye. Jerry found something off it. Transmitter boy or something. Is that right? 
Yeah, that's right. I didn't know that. No, you wouldn't. But then you're dead as a post, aren't you? Have you got that then? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. How does it compare with Buenos Aires? Not so many gauchos. <laughs> Function room. Very nice. Oh, I've got the American ambassador tonight. Tell Chef we'll be dinner for six, will you? Oh. Ah, bit of a star, is he? Well, I'm going to lay a Japanese delegation on him tomorrow for tea. Appropriate but not obvious. Absolutely no sushi. <laughs> Has my stuff arrived yet? Yep. Good, I want to get changed. Panic button. There's another one right by the bed. Two, you said, ma'am, was it? Yeah. Right. Uh, there you are, no. right. Not a bad day. No, it's forgetting. Give me one pill. Very much Take care now. Hi. Uh, hi. Yes, my friend. I've just been up the harbour. It's a terrible thing, and I'm uh, writing a piece on it. What's that for? Yeah, and the boys on the pub said you might be a good man to talk to. So, uh, uh, I could buy you a time. drink. Yeah. Security's more discreet than Beirut. Good. It'll be a big enough wrench for Sam as it is. Oh, God, don't worry about him. He'll be fine. Becky, what am I going to do when some dashing young diplomat sweeps you off your feet? Well, I suppose an impressive dowry is too much to hope for. No chance. Did Nate phone? No. No, not yet. Mr Delaney, you got a minute? We're just getting ready to put out. Uh, they said on the pub you found a uh, submarine boy. Yes, I did. It was... Yeah, I I'm writing a piece on uh, trawler submarine incidents. Uh, whereabouts was it you found it? Uh, the boy? In the water. With the bodies. Uh, and what about the lad you pulled out of the water this afternoon? The lad? What about him? Well, uh, did you know him well? Yes, I knew him well. He was my son. As anyone around here would have told you. Look, I don't know what your game is, and I don't really fucking care much. I'm busy. All right. My brother-in-law is still out there somewhere. So I'm going to keep looking till I find him. Hello, Spook. Didn't want to disturb the party. Very thoughtful of you. Drink? Sure. Still the on-low flyer? As ever. How's Uncle Sam? Very nice. Taking a neighbourly interest in our dealings with the Sakai Corporation. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know that Flaherty's been chasing them for his constituency? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, Tyler never mentioned it to me. Oh, I didn't want to burden Stephen with that information. He was only holding the ball pending your arrival. Is he all right about that, my being here? Missing the temporary increase in his allowance, as I expect. Nothing more. He's loyal. To whom? Queen and country. What about Commander Bracken? I gather he's had no joy running that sub to ground yet. No. Right. So how was Kilbriggan? Do you think there's anything to support Flaherty's allegations? Plenty of talk about the indicator boy. And what do you know about the Cora? It's odd. Both the indicator boy and the bodies have all been found by one guy, Jerry Delaney. Given the scale of the search, no one else has turned up anything. No wreckage, no bodies, nothing. Coincidence? I looked him up in the owner's register. Apart from his own boat, he also owned the Cora. Well, maybe it was fate. It was his son that drowned. As the air-sea search for the Cora enters its third day, hope of finding the last missing crew member alive is fading fast. 
Both the American and Russian embassies in Dublin declined to say whether any of their vessels had been in the area at the time. The British embassy has nothing to add to its initial statement that no British vessels were involved. <laughs> It'll be fine, Ambassador. Don't you worry. How many more of us have to die before you do Quite a problem getting in. Little. I'm very sorry about that. It's not, it's not the welcome I would have wanted for you. The president tells me you had a very good meeting this morning. He did. I think, Chuck, we're ready for the uh, official photograph now, if you're right. Well, uh, I'm a bit of a mess. Yes. Uh, I met your husband, David, once in Boston in 82, I think it was. That'd be the expo. That's right, yes. Quite a night we had, as I remember. And your eldest boy is reading politics at Trinity. Nate, yes, yes, he's in his second year. Very Mrs. Smith, over good. here. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Good day. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. You were over at Casey Barracks uh, yesterday with our Mr. Flaherty. Uh, I believe. We met, yes. Gave you a bit of a hard time, did he? That's how Kevin, you see, gets to be in his bonnet before you know where you are. You won't mind a bit of friendly advice from a seasoned old campaigner. Not at all. What you want to do is take the wind out of Kevin's sails. A simple apology. An admission of responsibility on your part, and the whole thing stopped before it starts. Well, now we could only apologize if there was something to apologize for. Mm, of course. But you see, Kevin is determined to have satisfaction over this. It really would be better for all concerned if you could settle things amicably. Otherwise, we could be very well forced to take steps that may surprise you. Steps which may surprise us? Well, I think we can rule out a declaration of war, don't you? It's hardly a matter for levity, Stephen. No, it's an emotive issue, as you can testify. If Flaherty plays it right, perfidious Albion, up to her old tricks again, he might make a good few column inches. No, Stephen, that's not the point. The point is that if they prove that we were responsible and we've denied it, we're going to find ourselves with more than just egg on our faces. No, he can't prove it. He's chancing his arm. He's got the boy. That's all. That's all we know about. What did London advise? Maintaining our present position. Whistling in the dark. Commander, anything further from the MOD? I'm awaiting their reply. Good God, it's a simple enough question. Did we have a vessel in the area, or didn't we? Possibly, possibly not. Uh, and if we did, there's a long way between us having a submarine in the area and them being able to prove that we sank their trawler. It's not about them being able to prove anything, as you so gallantly put it. If we were responsible, we have a moral obligation to admit as much. I beg to differ. Any moral obligation we might have is to the living. The information that you appear only too willing to offer up lightly could well compromise the safety of the submariners, if indeed a submarine was involved. Do you want me to call the first sea lord myself? You must do what you think is best. Ambassador? Yes? Sorry to interrupt, but I thought you'd want to know. A body's been found by a Royal Naval Fisheries Protection Vessel. Right. Um, can, can you find out when and where she's due to dock? Sometime this afternoon in Dublin, I understand. And inform the captain that I'll be coming aboard and that I don't want any fuss. Of course. You are meant to be having tea with the Sakai Corporation at the residence this afternoon. Yes, they'll be gone by five. If you have questions for the captain, 
Might they not be better sent through the naval attaché? Not if I want an answer this side of the millennium, no. Yet. I'm not prepared to prejudge this matter until all the facts have been collated. When will that be, Minister? I would hope to be able to make an announcement within the next 24 hours. Is there any truth in the rumour that a British submarine was involved? I've said I'm not prepared to prejudge the matter. You're not here to point the finger, Minister. What are you here for? I'm here because I went to school with the man that boat's brought home. I don't think anything further than that needs to be said. Do you? So oh, sorry. You'll find out who did this, Captain. I promise. Can I help you? Naturally, Her Majesty's government would be honored to welcome a company of such worldwide renown as the Sakai Corporation. Sakai Corporation. Mother! 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 Would you excuse me? I really need to see some identification. Mother! I cannot have you wandering around the house just doing... Mother! Can you tell this idiot who I am? It's all right, Martin. This is Nate, my rude son. We've been trying to phone you. I want to talk to you. All right, I'm listening. Not now. I've got people here. Nate! <laughs> Becky, my God. <laughs> you can have Sam shipped over too. We can all play unhappy families. Have you been drinking? So what? You're on that bloody bike again, aren't you? They can't touch me for it, can they? I'm diplomatically immune. Every cloud has a... Come on. Through to the kitchen. I'll fix you something. My apologies, gentlemen. No one in Europe will be able to offer better incentives. For example, we are willing to bear 75% of the cost of training the workforce over the first... Mr. Tyler said 75% and you said 55%. How'd it go? Great. I'm coming back tomorrow to iron out the wrinkles. Well done. Oh, yes, well done. So, what was it you so desperately needed to talk to me about? Protection officers. I didn't need protection till you showed up. I didn't choose to come here. You could have passed on the appointment. It's my job, Nate. And this is my life. Oh, please. What? Well, that was a bit unnecessary, don't you think? When I want advice from the hired help, I'll ask for it, OK? Where's my keys? Where's my bloody keys? She's taken them, hasn't she? Mother! Mother! After picking up the Cora's Mayday, we made best possible speed at the coordinates she gave us and arrived approximately two hours later. Having found no sign of the vessel or survivors, we were eventually stood down and made way for our patrol zone. And that's where you found the skipper's body? About 30 miles further north, here. Inside Irish waters? Just on their side of the box closure. The what? An area designated by the European Union as either having been fished out or where stock is dwindling. I see. Though in some parts of this particular box closure, landing place is permitted this month, I believe. No, sorry, that was last month. My mistake. Now, prawn trawlers are allowed to land 5% by catch in other fish, including whitefish. No, stop, stop. How the hell do you police a system like this? <laughs> With great difficulty. The guys we pick up are just trying to earn a living. It's not their fault some petty fogging Eurocrat keeps shifting the goalposts. What about submarines? 
You notified of their whereabouts? No. Pass me the milk, will you? What lies are you peddling on behalf of the forces of darkness this week? Not today, Nate, please. Yeah, well, I have to live with this shit. So do I. Look, don't come here and behave like this. Look at me, I'm trying to talk to you. You have to have protection officers, if not for your own sake, for your brothers. What's Sam got to do with it? Look, Nate, whether you like it or not, we are in the public eye. Never mind the terrorists, there's enough nutters out there looking for their 15 minutes of fame. If they can get to you, they can get to him through you. You'll be putting him at risk. Oh, that's rich. Look, Mother, I'm free, white, single and over 21. And dependent on me for financial support. Now, you either have protection officers or I cut off your allowance, OK? No, no, no more paying off your bar bills, no paying off the plastic and the overdrafts. Fine. Do what you like. Stop the money. I'll get a job. I'm not having protection, and that's that. Look, Nate, I am trying. Please give me a chance. Like you gave Dad? Thank you very much. Mr Norris, can I buy you that drink now? I've been asking round about you. None of the press boys have heard of you. Well, that's funny, because I know all about you. Selling fish off the back of your truck. Is that it? What's this? The Department of the Marine? Look, I'm trying to make a living around here, you know? Trying to put food on the table. I have no intentions of making trouble for you. Far from it. Mutual cooperation. That's the name of the game. Now, let's have that drink. Cheers. It's just a way of making a bit extra, you know? I mean, there's none of us here exactly millionaires. <laughs> Where's the harm? The fish I sell is my catch. So, if I don't get rid of it, it goes back into the sea dead anyway. Uh, and did the uh, Cora supply you with uh, bycatch? It's stuff from all the boats. You worked on it, though? Uh, from time to time. So why didn't you go to see the day she sank? I don't want to be saying anything against anybody, you know. Uh, Jerry is a nice fella and all. Every owner will push his boat as far as it'll go. Comes a point. She was unseaworthy. Only last month we nearly lost her. Gear snagged on the wreck. What, the skipper out of the waters? Aye, he knew the waters all right. Only the nav sat. Nav sat? Positioning equipment. Slacking up. You were off course? Off course. I can take it us off the coast of Brazil somewhere. I had hoped to have had some response from you before now, Ambassador. But we haven't collated all our evidence yet. You gave me 48 hours. Events have overtaken us. The post-mortem results of one of the chorus crew, Sean Delaney, has been leaked. It's the pathologist's opinion that he survived for some time in the water. I'd be making a statement to that effect in the dial this afternoon at four o'clock, unless I hear from you. I see. Well, thank you for letting me know. The truth is, Ambassador, those men could have been, should have been picked up, but they were left to die. Needless to say, this latest affront within our territorial waters cannot go unchallenged. The commercial attaché is waiting on the line for you, Ambassador. John? Jennifer said you wanted to see me. Yes, Stephen, you're going to have to start the Sakai meeting without me. I see. This is a very delicate stage in the negotiations, I'm Well, come if we are, Stephen. Oh, thank you for your confidence. I should be back by two. Well, I'll inquire where you'll be if anything comes up. My name's Harriet Smith. I don't want to intrude on your private grief. Smith? 
You were Casey Burricks? Yes. I thought I recognized the face. You're the British ambassador. Oh, you've a right nerve coming here. I I'm not here in any official capacity, Mr. Delaney. I, I just wanted to offer my condolences. Is that right? Well, it's a bit late for that now. Shh, Jerry. Let her say. I lost my husband four years ago, so I know a little of what you're going through. If there's anything I can do, I mean, just as a private individual... All right. I... You said your piece. Now go. Please, go. You've come all this way from Dublin, you say? Yes. Ah, Sakai-san. It's good to see you again. Is there a problem? Uh, Mr. Sakai is wondering where the ambassador is. I regret Her Excellency has other business, but she assured me she would join us by two o'clock at the latest. I have had some refreshment provided, which you might care to... Uh, <laughs> I'll be all right, you know, and then I'll... I'll think of something and just... How was it you lost your husband? Was he ill or...? He was killed. Car bomb. Jesus. Over here? No, no. I was working in the Middle East and... one morning he took my car. When it happened, did it seem to you like you were in a dream you couldn't wake up out of? Yes. I, I kept expecting him to walk in through the door. And did you have any kids or what? Two. How are they with it? Um, Nate took it worse. He's older. Uh, Sam is only nine. He's fine. The young are so resilient, aren't they? Throw anything at them. Indestructible. Nate still blames me. What could you have done? It wasn't your fault, was it? I don't know. What happened out there? It's the not knowing's killing me. You said if there was anything you could do, that's all I want, to know what happened. I was rather hoping that you could help me with that. <clears throat> First I knew anything was when I heard Sean put out the May Day, you know? My stomach turned over. Sean put out the May Day? Yeah. Am I right in thinking that Sean was a late addition to the crew, Mr Delaney? Yes, Joe, my brother, the skipper. Someone cried off the last. And did Sean usually work on the boat? You're joking. God, no. Not enough work here for the men, never mind the kids. Fishing's dying here, with the quotas and all. But he knew his way around the Cora. Of course. I mean, he hadn't been out in it for a few years, but he knew what was what. Are you trying to say it was Sean's fault? I told him all. So they try anyway to blame any other bugger but themselves. Did Sean know that the nav was faulty, Mr Delaney? How do you mean the nav was faulty? Well, Jackie Norris said it was unreliable. Jackie Norris is saying anything to down us. The only reason he didn't want to go on the corner was his share of the catch. There was nothing wrong with the nav if you knew what you were doing. But Sean didn't, did he? What are you getting at? I'm just trying to get at the truth. The bodies you recovered were nowhere near the position that Sean gave out, were they? They were inside the box closure, where the fisheries protection vessel found a skipper. I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't want anyone to know where they were, did you? Because they were trawling for unlicensed fish. That's what you were trying to protect. Jerry? Oh, Jesus. Why didn't you tell the rescue boats where they were? I went there myself, Maud. No one could have got there quicker. But they were dead already. The two of them. Floating on the water. Dead. The submarine should have picked them up. You should have got the helicopters up, told them where to look. I think I haven't thought of that since then. Gone over and over to me head. Why didn't you? Like breaking. 
the speed limit. Everyone does it. The sea is the sea. We just follow the fish. What do they know about box closures? We just follow the fish. having a vessel in the area. Which area were you referring to? The area given in the Cora's Meadow. And if I asked you to widen that search area to a radius of, say, 30 miles, would they still have denied it? When did you first become aware that we were responsible? Commander, Kevin Flaherty is about to tell the Doyle that our submarine left the crew of the Cora to drown. Now, if there were any mitigating circumstances, it would be in the interest of your service to reveal them. I might also add that your cooperation will be noted when I ask for your immediate recall. Our submarine did not leave the crew of the trawler to drown. Had she been able, she would have surfaced at once and picked up survivors, but she was not. Why not? Her fair water planes were fouled in the trawler's nets, effectively keeping her submerged for two days. She released the indicator boy immediately to alert the rescue services of her position. Well, then why did nobody come? I can only assume that the boy was damaged, which prevented it transmitting its mayday signal. But once the submarine had cut herself free, she surfaced and reported that she'd been involved in a trawler collision. And when was that? Two days ago. You should have admitted to it at once. There was nothing to be gained. Would admitting it have helped the dead? As you were at pains to point out to me, Commander, we also have a moral obligation to the living. Will that be all? Yes. D no, no. What the hell was she doing inside Irish waters? She was doing her duty, Ambassador. Shadowing another vessel. Protecting our island. At any cost. Thank you, Commander. Prove any of this. The proof is out there, Minister. You'll find the wreck of the Cora where the skipper's body was found. Inside Irish waters? Yes. Whatever the operational reasons for her presence, we were in the wrong. The submarine should have been travelling on the surface. And she did try to raise the alarm by sending up her indicator boy. Well, that would tally with her own findings. The indicator boy was found to be inoperative. Well, but that still doesn't excuse Mr. Tyler's denial of any British involvement. Now, the MOD would argue that they answered your inquiries truthfully. They were asked if they had a vessel in the incorrect position given out by Sean, and they did not. Pure sophistry. Yes, you're right. I suppose the sin here is one of omission. The Navy should have reported the accident as soon as the sub re-established contact two days ago. I really am very sorry. I know the skipper was a friend of yours. We were at school together. Well, I mustn't keep you from the chamber any longer. Ambassador, 
I am grateful to you for your candor and pleasantly surprised. You kept your word. Thank you. He accepted it. It was the truth. Ambassador. Stephen, how did it go with the Sakai Corporation? It would appear they have decided to cite in Mr. Flaherty's constituency. Well, you mustn't blame yourself. I'm sure you did your best. I have to say, Ambassador, that to my mind, Mr. Sakai took great exception to your absence from today's meeting. I shall, of course, make a full report to the Irish desk on the matter. Before you do that, I'd like you to draft a letter requesting a new military attaché. Ambassador? Commander Bracken is to be recalled, effective immediately. I see. Not a team player, Stephen. Unlike yourself. Ambassador. Japanese deals push Flaherty's statement onto the second page. How do we come out of it? All right. Uh, tragic accident. Um, full and frank explanation from the British Embassy. The Minister looks forward to a fruitful relationship with the newly arrived British Ambassador, Mrs. Harriet Smith. I've always relied on the kindness of stringers. You knew Sakai would take it as an insult if you sent along an underling to deal with him, didn't you? Anyone would think you wanted the factory to go to Kilbriggan. John, don't you have some work to be getting on with? Ambassador. 